Hey guys, what's going on? Uh, today I'll be doing my top 20 and carry movies. And uh, for Christmas, I did get this new camera, so I just set up the tripod and everything. So, this will be the first video I've done uh, with my new camera. So, hopefully, like, the pitch quality is better and the sound quality is better. Uh, so, that's pretty cool. Um, and I know I haven't done a lot of videos lately or a lot of like videos based on movies. Um, but, like, like, like I said, and I think it was my worst best Terminator movies. Um, uh, there's a bunch of lists I want to do, but to do those lists, I've got to watch a bunch of new movies. So basically, I've just been spending most of my spare time like buying and watching new movies. Um, but I've got onto this one, so I'll be doing my top 10 Jim Carrey movies. Um, now, Jim Carrey um, is probably one of my favourite actors of all time. Cause he's such a good, versatile actor. Like he could just do like any role you th you throw it in. And like um, some of his movies were a big part of my childhood. And then, then like over the years, I've bought and watched some more Jim Carrey movies. Um, so now I just thought, why not do my top 10 on it? Oh yeah, before I start, there are a few um, Jim Carrey movies that I haven't watched, like Cable Guy, Mr. Popper's Penguins, Kick-Ass 2, and Dumber Dumber 2. But from what I've heard, and they're not really that good anyway, any of them. Um, but so there are a few others, but um, I can't remember them right now. So first I've got some honorable mentions. My first honorable mention is The Mask. Now I know this is quite a popular Jim Carrey movie. So lots of people say this was one of his best movies, if not like the best Jim Carrey movie. Now I didn't grow up watching this film, like I heard really good things about it, but I didn't get end up watching this film until about a year ago, so I was really looking forward to it because I thought, oh god this is supposed to be one of Jim Carrey's classic and Jim Carrey's a great actor, and I watched it and I really didn't like it too much, I mean I did enjoy it, like Jim Carrey's performance as usual is amazing, he was like perfect casting for the mass, I can't imagine anyone else doing it, well um, Jamie Kennedy did, did it, but you know he was shit, um, so but besides that, there wasn't really much I liked in it, like, the actual character, uh, Jim Carrey's main character, not the mask, and what was it, Stanley Ipkiss, and that was it, I think it was kind of a plain, boring character, um, Cameron Diaz, I guess she was good in it, but nothing in this movie really stood out to me, that I thought, okay, this is a really good movie, I mean, it's enjoyable, I'll watch it again, but it's really nothing special, I don't think. Another honourable mention is Liar Liar. Now I think this movie is severely overrated, I mean I did watch this movie like when I was quite young, I probably first watched this movie when I was about 10, and I liked it when I first saw it, but when I watched it again and again and again, I saw some faults of it that I really didn't like. My biggest fault is Jim Carrey's character, um, Fletcher, I hate that guy so much, I know like it's part of his story arc, it's supposed to be like, at the beginning of the movie he's supposed to be this like arsehole who always lied all the time, and all that stuff, and at the end like, like he turned into a better person, but he didn't really, at the end of the movie he learned to like, um, appreciate his son, which is good, I guess. But when he goes back to work or whatever, he's still gonna lie for like criminals and that. He's not gonna like not. He's, only, he's not gonna like only defend people who are innocent. He's still gonna like lie and cheat his way out of everything. Um, so yeah, this is only Jim Carrey, Jim Carrey character that I didn't like. Um, another thing is the whole thing with the lying. Like the kid's wish was um, for what I wish for one day that my dad couldn't lie. And he didn't, but they also added some new stupid rules that wouldn't make sense. Like, he couldn't ask a question if he knows the answer is a lie. Like, that wasn't part of what the kid said, so that didn't make sense. And there was something else, something like he couldn't write lies, I think it was. Um, what else was there, like, the whole thing of the lying? Uh, I can't remember it, but still, another thing um, is, like, the whole thing with, like, the, the court case um, subplot with, like, the woman who's trying to get custody, like, money for the kids or something like that. And like, like the movie says it up, so we're like rooting against her. But at the end of the day, she won. So I don't, I don't get that. And then another thing is uh, at the end, Fletcher and like his ex-wife get together. So I think that really annoyed me. I think it was like just like the writers um, were just thinking, oh, it's all got to be a happy ending. Everyone's got to be together and have like a stereotypical movie ending. And I just thought during the movie, you can tell that them two like had a past. But like they've grown apart from each other and they're not like interested in each other anymore. You could tell that. So at the end of the movie, uh, they got together. So suddenly it was just like that, like for no reason at all. So I thought it was just really stupid. Um, so yeah, those four main things really annoy me about this movie. Like Jim Carrey's performance was really good as usual. Like when he was like doing that thing where he was like beating himself up in the bathroom that got me in hysterics first time I saw it. Like when he was like trying to say that the pen is red when it was blue and he started writing blue all over himself. All that. That was really funny. But I just don't like this movie that much. Sorry. Uh, my last honourable mention is Batman Forever. Now, I love Batman Forever. I'll always defend uh, Batman Forever as a good film. And Jim Carrey in this movie is especially good. Um, but one of the things... Oh, yeah, I got this Blu-ray kind of recently because I was going to show you the DVD. But uh, for Christmas, I got Batman Returns on Blu-ray. And since I want to get all the Batman movies on Blu-ray, I decided to order Batman Forever. So, yeah, it looks pretty cool. I really like this front cover. But anyway, back to the film. Um, 
yeah, I really like Jim Carrey in this movie, but it's not really a Jim Carrey film, so that's why it's an honourable mention, and, um, yeah, that's it really, I really like this movie, but it's not really that great, and it's still got Jim Carrey in it, so that's why it's an honourable mention. And now getting on to my proper list. Number 10 is A Christmas Carol. Now, for me, this is, uh, like, the definitive thingy that says Jim Carrey can do any role he's playing, because I think he played Scrooge amazingly. And yeah, you can argue, oh, he doesn't really play Scrooge, it's animated, but he did do the motion capture, he did the voice, and they used, like, uh, his facial features to uh, animate Scrooge, so yeah, he did play him, really. Um, the animation on this movie... I mean, the animation on this movie is really great, and in Blu-ray, it looks amazing. Like, all Disney Blu-rays look fantastic. I think, um, uh, like, Marvel Blu-rays and Disney Blu-rays are the best Blu-rays to get because they look and sound amazing. And, like, this one's no different. I think it's a really good adaptation of A Christmas Carol. And I can't really remember if people like this or not. I think it's got, like, kind of um, decisive reviews. Oh, I can't say the word. Um, some people liked it, some people didn't. Um, I can't really find anything that I didn't like in this. So one thing that kind of I was disappointed in because the first um, a Christmas Carol a Christmas Carol adaptation that I watched was Albert Albert Finney Scrooge, and in that one I really liked it where you like see him fall into the grave and then you see him in hell and that. Then he's like in the office and he's really cold. I thought that was really interesting. And in every other adaptation um, of Scrooge that I've seen, uh, you never see Scrooge being in hell. And I thought um, like with like Disney's skill, um, you'd be able to, they'd be able to make like. Um, hell look really cool in that. I know that hell's supposed to be cool, but they could really use their animation skills um, to make it look good, and they could really like do something with that. And they didn't. They just like fell into the grave, and then you woke up at home. So I was kind of disappointed in that. I thought it'd be kind of like a, a, a climactic ending, but it wasn't really. Um, but still, I really love this movie. Oh yeah, it's from Robert Zemeckis. I didn't know that before. He directed Back to the Future, Cast Away, and some other stuff. So, so yeah, you can tell why it's good if he directed it. So yeah, and we're turning the list. Number nine. Is Yes Man. Now this is one of the uh, recent Jim Carrey movies that I watched, and I think I thought this movie. I felt like this was a really similar film to Liar Liar, and I kept on like having like in a whatever uh, discussing what's better out of Yes Man or Liar Liar. And in the end, I decided Yes Man was the better one. One of the main reasons is I like the protagonist more. He's more like of a real person. Um, there's a great supporting cast with uh, like Bradley Cooper, for example. And what I liked about it that's different is that he chose never, I mean, always to say yes and, like, always to do that thing. Like, um, uh, yeah, you can argue, like, when he, like, tried to say no, something bad happened to him, which I thought was kind of silly because there's no reason why it should have. But still, I like that more, that he, like, wanted to, like, do good things for himself without him being forced to, like, do good things like in Liar Liar. Uh, one thing I didn't like in it is, um, um, his... The love interest, I didn't think they had any chemistry at all, really, so that kind of ruined it. But there were some funny sketches in here. Um, so, yeah, I really like Yes Man. Number eight is Horton Hears a Who. Now, this is another great animated film by Jim Carrey. I think Jim Carrey and Steve Carell are a great comedic duo. I think they should do more stuff together. Um, what else? I think, uh, and I always get confused with Dr. Seuss's. Um, like films and books and that because I thought is this in the same universe as like The Grinch because um, oh yeah another thing I haven't seen How the Grinch Stole Christmas like I have seen How the Grinch Stole Christmas but I haven't got it and I can't remember it um, so yeah um, cause this is like set in the, is this set, set in the same universe as The Grinch or something because like the, it's based in Whoville and I think How the Grinch Stole Christmas was in Whoville um, so the whole, the whole of Doctor Zeus like kind of confuses me uh, but still, I really like this movie. Uh, when I first watched it, I didn't even know like the elephant was Jim Carrey. Cause I watched this when I was very young. So when I found out, I thought, like, well, I really didn't think that was Jim Carrey. Um, this is a really fun uh, movie. I haven't really got much to say about it. Not much I didn't like, really. One thing that, um, that did annoy me, though, is that the kangaroo, because the kangaroo was an absolute nutcase. Like, she wanted to, like basically burn a flower and a pot of oil with like everyone watching and basically torture Horton just because he thought there were people on a spec and he was telling people about it, I thought that was really, she went a bit out of tea, I mean she even considered selling her own son to get someone to take the spec off him, and, in the, and so I thought she was going to like get her comeuppance at the end, but then she didn't, she was just like, oh she realised that there are people on the spec, so now she's good, and I thought, nah, I want something to happen, I mean, like, the movie like, builds it up so that like, she's going to get her comeuppance, and like, she didn't, so that kind of annoyed me, besides that, I think this was a really fun uh, movie, like I said, Steve Carell and Jim Carrey were a really good comedic duo, and I hope they do more stuff together. So yeah, number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 on the list. Is it 8? Yeah, I think it's 8. Number 7 
is me, myself, and Irene. Uh, now, this is quite an enjoyable uh, movie, but Family Brothers said that this was their worst movie. And I can see why they think that. Sometimes this movie goes a bit far, sometimes a bit OTT. Um, but still, I think Jim Carrey was really great, like, uh, doing playing Hank and um, Charlie. Like, Charlie Bellgates and Hank something, I forgot what his last name was. Um, his performance, as per usual, was amazing. Um, Rene Zellweger was also really good in this. There were some funny sketches in here. Um, I like that he's a policeman and that, and he's like underrated. And, like seeing him like just get like, like treated like, like treated like shit really uh, by everyone. Then when he turns into Hanks, he likes like uh, gets his vengeance upon all of them. I thought that was really funny. Um, so yes, yeah, it's, it's just quite a funny movie. I think like not it's not like a masterpiece of it, but I just really like it. Number six is Bruce Almighty. Now I really like Bruce Almighty. I think it's a really interesting concept that a guy he's down on his luck, um, like he hasn't got the job at work, like that old cliche. But then he keeps on blaming God for like ruining his life. So God comes up to him and says, "Okay, you think you can do a better job? Here are my, here are all my powers. Let's see how good you do." And he kind of misuses his powers, and in the end, he realizes that like he doesn't want the responsibility of being God, so he gives it back. So I think it's a really interesting concept. I mean, it did like get a crappy sequel slash spin off in Evan Evan Almighty, but I did do a feud on them. So if you want to see that, then go see that if you want to. But yeah, it's a really um, uh, really good film. Bruce Nolan, I think his name was, uh, was a really funny character. My favorite scene in the movie is when he's on the boat at Niagara Falls. That just gets me in hysterics all the time. Jim Carrey's just OTT. You can really tell he throws himself to everything he does. Um, some really cool like effects in here. Um, some of the things that Jim Carrey does with his powers are really funny. Um, Jennifer Aniston was a really good um, love interest. Her and Jim Carrey, I think, had really good chemistry. Um, so yeah, I really like Bruce Almighty. Check it out if you haven't already. Number five is Ace Ventura Pet Detective. Now this could be the first Jim Carrey movie that I watched, but I've watched this so so many times. I must have watched this at least thirty times, like maybe like twenty times. Um, and it, I really liked it like before, and I don't really like it as much anymore, uh, which is a shame. But I think if I didn't overwatch it, then I would like it more. But still, this is a really funny movie. This was like basically the high point for Jim Carrey's career. Really, like this is what took his career like off. 